Hello and welcome back to episode 2 of building the Imperial Communications Base in LEGO. Today we're going to have a lot of progress on the actual mock. Uh, last week was kind of just plans and getting in a few halls and stuff like that. This week there's going to be a few more halls. There's also going to be a lot of progress to show off. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Kicking off the halls segment of the video, here we have a small Bricklink order from Daddy's Bricks on Bricklink. So we'll just go ahead and open this one up right here. Like so. All right, so here is the package here. It's got a nice little business card, the store name and URL. So we'll open this bag up right here. And first thing we got right here are trans red one by two bricks. These are gonna be used for the lava. I should have more coming in from a different store as well as a few wedges. And here we have some hinges and dark orange slopes. The hinges are going to be used for the main part of the base at the top section. I'll explain that later. Same thing with these one by four panels also going to be used in the same area as the hinges. And then here we have some one by two panels, as well as it looks like dark bluish gray curved slopes, um, light bluish gray cheese slopes, and dark orange cheese critters. So those are all really nice pieces. And then lastly, here we have some light bluish gray uh, wedges, as well as it looks like some more dark bluish gray uh, curved slopes and medium nougat uh, cheese slopes, as well as a nice pair of legs that I'm not sure are gonna come through. All right, so I went ahead and pulled out those legs here so you can get a little bit of a better look. Basically, they are dark brown on the top and black on the bottom, and they have a nice print on them. You've probably seen them around. It's got knee pads and a little belt that goes around to a holster on the side that you can kind of see. It's not really probably coming through that well. Some pretty nice legs. Definitely wanted to pick them up. They were only like a buck and a half or something like that. So grab them real quick. Next up, we have an order here from a lot of bricks on Bricklink. And we'll dump it out. Here we have, looks like the invoice with all of the parts that I got. And it looks oh okay so the bag is open and it looks like all of the parts are in the same bag which is not the best looks like we got some translucent red bricks in here then we got some wedges dark bluish gray panels uh some of these which fell out <laughs> uh this is not what i ordered uh, I ordered dark orange cheese graters and they gave me regular orange, so I'm gonna have to complain about that. And then here we have a bunch of minifigure parts, so I'm excited to open some of these up, put these to use. Um, here we have some more trans red bricks, dark orange corner tiles, one by one, grill tiles, uh, one by three, I don't know. You can really see that, but one by three dark orange panels, some light bluish gray one by twos, uh, corners, a bunch of random stuff in here. We got some torsos, some legs, and some grass. So definitely gonna have to open these up, and I am going to be keeping that invoice to make sure that everything is in here. I'm definitely gonna make sure that these were actually supposed to be dark orange. But other than that, I mean, the store had really good prices and stuff like that. A decent selection of parts, but definitely going to have to complain about that. Next up here, we got an order somewhat smaller uh, from a store called 13th Warrior. Like so. Pull out here. Here we have, it looks like, the invoice. Here we have some inverted 2x2 two two light blue gray tiles, dark orange wedges, some more here, medium nougat cheese slopes, um, and then just a couple other pieces here, 
dark orange of the new corner uh, tiles. So definitely gonna use those and just a few other assorted pieces. So don't see any immediate issues with this one, but as with the other order, I'm going to double check just to make sure. And then here we have another order. I think this is actually the biggest order out of all of them. This is from Blaine or Blaine's World on Bricklink. Definitely, if you guys haven't checked out his store, give it a look. He has some really great prices on some parts and a good selection. And he's just an overall great friend to me and the members of Empire Lug. So definitely go check him out if you haven't already. But we're just gonna turn this around and open it up. Okay, peel this out and dump it out. First of all, this is, I, I believe this is new, at least relatively new. I've ordered from him in the past, but we got a nice little sticker here. It's got his, you know, Blaine's World logo on it. That's pretty cool. And then here we have a business card. It's got his Instagram, so go follow him on there. And his store name. So jumping in, I guess, with this separate bag here. These are uh, two by two inverted light bluish gray brackets. So that I'm happy to get from him. And then here we have a lot of different stuff here. We got some bricks in medium nougat, got some tiles, got some slopes in light bluish gray, some cheese slopes, got some looks like tiles in trans red, got some curved slopes in dark orange. These things are really nice. I'm going to try and use these on some rebels in the mock. These are dark tan on the top, brown on the bottom, dual molded legs. Had to snag those really quick. Uh, got some cheese grater slopes in light bluish gray some door panels um, in dark bluish gray, as well as other assorted things in there. So again, go check out Blaine. He has a really good store and he's a really nice dude. So go give his store a look. And then last up, we got this. This is an order from the Fat Cat Brick House, also known as Daniel's Bricklink store. Every time I go and make orders, I always go through and make sure his store doesn't have anything that I need. This time it did, and he also sent me a few extra parts for the mock, uh, and that was really nice of him. So definitely go check out his store. I'll have a link to it on the screen, but definitely go check out the Fat Cat Brick House on Bricklink. Okay. Dump it out like this. There we go. Here we got some inverted two by or uh, one by two light blue gray brackets. Uh, and then here we got some dark tan slopes and white studs with the hole in the center. So also very useful there. Um, and then here we got some bigger dark tan slopes. Got some medium flesh uh, corners. Here we got some cape pieces. And then here we have some light bluish gray corner slopes, uh, some light bluish gray tile. And here we have sand green one by one clips. And then here we have some uh, regular one by one brackets in light bluish gray and inverted one by one brackets in dark bluish gray also very useful and then here we have a bunch of one by two tile in dark orange and this was the only piece of texturing in dark orange that i did not have so i'm very happy that daniel had these i think he had them on pick a brick so he also sent those over to me but yeah definitely go check out the fat cat brick house on Bricklink if you need some parts. All right guys, so starting off the building segment of the video, here we have um, the start of this, the top area. Um, I'll have the picture, the concept art with the section that this is representing. Um, but basically this is gonna be the outside edge of the base on top of the mountain. Um, we got these sloped sides, nice corner here, 
And this is going to be the little longer section that sticks out here. It's probably going to extend probably another eight or so studs. Um, but yeah, so this is the beginning of that design. This was also the thumbnail of last week's update. And I guess kind of here, you can see what it looks like. We got the um, inverted bracket right here. Got some bricks here, the cheese slope that meets up nicely with this uh, panel here. You can see attached to some plates with the hinge and the clips in here. We got black so far, but the sand green ones will come in once I run out of those. And then this corner uh, three by three slope matches up really nicely here in that corner section. And then over here, pretty much the same thing. It's a little bit smaller or uh, less of an angle, but we got the um, cheese slope there and same panel going on there. Obviously the hinge and everything like that. And then for this section, um, these corner bits are the most difficult. Um, this whole area right here is all pretty much the same style. This is easy, but this corner, um, you got the brackets here and then you pop this off. You can see this section is actually extended off of here. This is all the same thing. Got some uh, snot bricks here that go here and match up nicely fill this out and then we have this here That is another one of those snot bricks Some cheese slopes on here and some more on the top this section just attaches here to these inverted brackets like so and this matches up nicely this was actually my contribution, <laughs> this corner a little bit. Um, this, as you can see here, comes out half a plate, but it matches up really nicely and clean with everything. So that is going to be the basis of the top section of the mock. I'm really happy with this. Daniel came up with the whole panel section. I contributed this little corner area but yeah, so the entire base should be really smooth. Um, it's got a nice thing of snot going on and very little studs. This entire area only has one stud here. So that is really cool. Um, but yeah, so that is the beginnings of the base. So this is something that I've been working on for a few days now. This is the Imperial Bunker or Endor Bunker that is going to be in the bottom section of the mountain. This is actually an improved design of the one that I used in a Sullust mock back from 2020, I think. And I'll have a picture up on the screen as well as a link to the video I did for the mock on my channel. But this one, I decided to make it in light bluish gray so it stands out a little bit more from the mountain. And I also made a lot of improvements over my Sullust design. So just starting off here, you can kind of see there's a lot of interesting angles going on, but everything on this is connected except for the roof, which is held in there by friction with these studs. So it is not going anywhere, but everything else is connected. And to prove this, I can go ahead and turn it upside down and nothing falls off. So that's pretty cool. I'm definitely happy about that. On my Sullust version, these tiles here on the side were not connected and these things in here had a very loose, weak connection. So I'm really happy that this design is strong enough to be able to do that without falling apart. But yeah, so starting off, I guess, with these main side areas, these are brackets, inverted brackets with tiles on the front and on the side. And then obviously they are just on the side connected to this nice little bit of snot going on there. And then these little tiles here on my Sullust one, they were connected at the bottom. But on this one, they are connected to a headlight brick on the top, which is a lot better because 
Now, since these are angled inwards, this matches the angle of the panel. So that looks a lot better. And uh, these little corner tiles here are now connected to a little thing that kind of snakes through here. It's got some of these on it. So that's how that's connected there. And then these sides are connected to a little thing of clips and these right here. That's kind of how that works. In there, you can kind of see the one by six contraption that kind of snakes through there. And then here for these, you can kind of see the clip in there, clip and hinge. And for the outwards two by three wedge areas, it is a clip here at a in the bottom that goes up to a bar, goes to another clip. And on the end of that clip is some more of these pieces. That's how those are connected. So that's not going anywhere. And then for these inwards, wedge areas it's just stacked up bricks and these hinge bricks and actually in there so this area matches the angle of these inverted mountain slopes there are some cheese slopes that olive green that you see in there is cheese slopes so that when you push this down it can't go too far and it just matches up pretty nicely with the angle in here and yeah, so that is how everything is held on there. And then the only thing left that we haven't talked about is the roof section. This is obviously just bricks. And then for the top section of the roof, it is offset by half a stud. So there's just some jumpers in there that connects this stuff so that the front here, there's a nice little indent and it kind of just continues around to the sides and then also this little section is just a stand-in because i actually ran out of these light bluish gray mountain slopes so then this is just a little build that matches the angle and then once i build the mountain around this you won't even be able to see that stud or anything like that so that's what that is and then you go ahead and pop the roof back on Take your little stormtrooper and stick him inside here and then you can see he has plenty of room in there He's not hitting his head and he has definitely enough space on either side of him for him to comfortably walk through and out into the battle so that is the bunker this is something that i've been also working on alongside the bunker and I am incredibly happy with how it turned out. You can probably guess what it is, but I wanted to have the screen out of focus and zoomed in so you couldn't really get a full glimpse. But we're gonna go ahead, zoom out, and focus it up and show you guys what I've been working on. So here you can see the lava. This is pretty much what it's going to look like on both sides, except this is the left side of the lava. On the right side, the stream is gonna curve off to one side, just so that the streams don't look the same. But yeah, so we'll just jump right in at the base, which was the first part that I built. So as you can see, the stream is snot. It's got some bricks and some plates laid in there too. So it doesn't just look like bricks or just look like plates. It has a nice texture. So that's pretty much the technique there. It's also really reflective, which is kind of cool. Um, but at the front here, we have just normal plates, kind of like a cut view. You can kind of see what it looks like underneath there. That looks pretty cool. And then basically, just got the snot stream, some wedges on top here, just tracing out the edges. And then it goes up here, move up the camera. And then we got the main falls and the little gray 
teeth kind of guiding the lava down. I'm not sure if I said I was going to do this um, beforehand, but this is something that I've had in my mind that I've wanted to try for a long time, so I'm glad that I could actually do it. And then pretty much these streams are just connected here at the bottom to the snot base, and it's just a bunch of plates and tiles that go up here to the top. And so that is how that's built. And then obviously we've got the rock base kind of going around it. This is pretty much what the rock work is gonna look like all throughout the mock. It's probably gonna be a little bit higher than this right here. Maybe another six or seven studs, something like that. But this is a pretty good idea of how big it is. Um, so that is this and the most important and intriguing thing about the lava pan this down here is with this and now i know we mentioned last update that we wanted to have lights and this is what this is one of the things that we're doing with them that's right we got lights in the lava and the nice pulsating lights here we got some lights in the stream and in the flows really 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 happy with how this turned out it just adds so much more to the lava gives it a nice animated look i'm really really happy with how this turned out um i'm gonna attempt to explain how i built this Unfortunately, I kind of just like built it and then kind of covered everything up. So you can't really get a good look behind there. But basically I used the cutting boards and I kind of outlined the outline here of what I wanted the stream to look like. And then I just took a little scissor, cut out the um, pathway here. And then I layered some lights kind of in a zigzag formation here put the cutting board on top of it, built this little snot section, put that on top of there, and then I cut out a seven by however long or however tall this is section of the cutting board and laid that up there. And now I can try to turn this around. There are lights here that I will string through the rest of the mock. I'll turn those off for now. But here in here, can kind of see there's a white plate that goes all the way down and then it's got some trans clear studs pretty much what I did was I took a white plate like this and then I took all of the lights kind of strung it through and to keep it from just falling right off I put studs so it would hold it in there I can give you guys a little bit of an explanation or an example of this if we take some of the lights Go ahead and focus it on here and then you take a plate like this kind of take the string of lighting put a stud here then you kind of push the string down take your studs and then you go like that and the string is underneath there as you can tell but it doesn't come out so it's held in there and then if you turn it on obviously the light turns on. So that's pretty much what this is in here, but it's on a much bigger scale. So we got the lights all strung up through there, held on in there. And then I took the cutting board section, kind of just stuck it on there. And that is that. And then here, zoom out. You can see how everything is connected here. Down here, we got a bunch of snot bricks some pillars going up here, some more snot bricks holding it in. And then at the top, this is some snot bricks here and then some headlight bricks that go across. These actually connect to the gray pillars. So these are all connected in here, goes right through. And there's also some snot bricks so you can start building up the rest of the mountain around there. So that all works out pretty good. And then you can see here, there's a few sections where the mountain 
is connected to these supports. But yeah, so that is the lava. And I'm really happy with it. The siding of this mock, we want to have a little bit of like the 3D cut view uh, sides. So that's what this is trying to be. Once I texture all of this, that should make it look a little bit more interesting from the side. My window is still right there. So there's a little bit of lighting on this side here, but you can definitely see the glow that these lights give off. And I just really, really like how that looks. Um, very, very happy with how this turned out. It's just, it's so cool. I've used lights in mocks before, but not to this extent. And I gotta say, <laughs> I really enjoy it. It looks, it adds so much to a mock. Um, even without these lights, the lava still looks pretty cool, but just adding these lights make it look so much better. All right, guys, so that was episode two of building the Imperial Communications Base. Uh, definitely, as I promised, got a lot of progress done. Got the lava done, we got uh, the bunker done, and I showed you guys a little bit of what the top section of the base is going to be. So next week, I hope to just expand everything that I've started on. Um, hopefully, we can pretty much finish up the green base plates by next week. Um, that's a lot. To, to hope for but brick fair is in I think like two weeks or so so definitely have to start kicking up the pace here and bang out a lot of progress so thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video goodbye